hello 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 today this is for you if you have been learning to paint but your finished paintings don't look anything like you want them to turn out like um you know you may be thinking everyone else seems to be able to create beautiful paintings but yours are just not as great as you hope they would be and you want to get better at painting so you can create art that you're happy with and that brings you joy so today I am going to share one of the fastest ways to get better at painting and it is way simpler than you might think. So hello everyone, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Silka, I'm founder of Heart for Art and my signature Fast Results painting membership for new artists, which is Paint Club. I help struggling first-time painters and aspiring artists just like you maybe, um, overcome any doubt and confusion and disappointment so you can create beautiful art with confidence and have a ton of fun along the way. So if you're watching live or on replay, say hi and let me know if you have ever painted something and not been happy with how it turned out. I'm going to put my hand up for that and it just happened to me recently as well. Um, so yeah, just type me or something if that's you. Because in this live, I'm going to talk about the one thing that you need to do to improve your skills and get better and you can, so that you can create art that you love, all right? Now, sometimes learning anything new can be equally as exciting as it can be frustrating if you don't quite know what you're doing. So, you know, with painting, for example, you get this idea in your head of how fun it's going to be and you get all excited about it and ready to start and eager um, and you think how great it's going to be to be getting creative. And it is fun, I promise you. Um, you know, and you're thinking of all the gorgeous things you can paint. Maybe you pick up a brush and you get started painting. And then it's a big wah, wah, wah when you look at your finished painting. And it's just not what you imagined in your head um, how it would turn out. And maybe you've just sort of felt a little bit disappointed or let down by the fact that it hasn't turned out the way you wanted to. Now, the mistake that most people make at this point is giving up, all right? They're thinking maybe, oh, I can't do this, so why try? Or I don't have what it takes. I'm never going to be able to get great at art like I see everybody else doing. It's just not working, and they give up. Now, at this point, this is, you know, this is not just new artists that this happens to. You might think, you know, it's just people who are just starting out, but you'd be surprised to know potentially that I still struggle with this quite often too, okay? Hi, Brenda. Um, I struggle with this quite often too, and just last weekend I was trying to create a new painting to teach in paint club, uh, and there were parts of it I just couldn't get how I wanted, so... I know how frustrating it feels to not be able to get the results you're trying to trying to achieve with your paintings. Um, you know, what you want to paint, but you know what you want to paint, but it just doesn't quite come together how you want. And your painting just doesn't turn out how you pictured it in your head. Um, it's really, it can be really disheartening. And, you know, you start thinking, maybe I can't do this. Maybe I can't do this. I know, I know what that's like, I, because I go through it too often <laughs> I know what it's like to feel like you've failed or maybe you're not good enough because I've been there too so I know what you're going through if this is you and to be honest it totally sucks it's a horrible feeling I hate it when you're like oh but I want to do this and I don't know how um, but there is a way and that's what I'm here to tell you today there is a way to push through that when that happens and that's why I wanted to come on today and share an experience I had recently with my latest painting and share how you can get out of that frustrated artist mode and get those results that you want, all right? I'm going to tell you how you can overcome it pretty simply so you can get those beautiful paintings happening how you picture them in your head. Um, so every month, just a bit of backstory, I teach a new painting step-by-step -step to my paint club members, which means that each month I'm designing a brand new painting. Now, I design all my paintings myself. I do enjoy doing that, but it also means they're all exclusive to paint club and heart for art. You can't find any of my paintings anywhere else. This is the only place to get them all because they're individual, unique, and just for us. Um, now, I've been painting my whole life pretty much as long as I can hold a paintbrush and over the years 
reckon I've gotten pretty good at it. <laughs> um, but there's a reason why I got that way. So let me share the story of what happened to me last weekend while I was trying to design our next painting. All right. Now normally I like I like paint I like painting things like nature and landscapes and animals, all inspired by New Zealand scenery and themes and everything around me. All right. Um, and we've got lots of members in Paint Club in New Zealand, and I paint with people in New Zealand obviously a lot, um, but we've also got a lot of people in Paint Club from around the world and Australia as well. So this time I wanted to create something for our Australian members, especially for them with an Aussie theme, and a friend of mine, Linda, thanks Linda, suggested I do a kookaburra. Um, which I have now finished. Let me show you the kookaburra. This is the finished kookaburra. And and um, what have we named her? Um, Matilda Cackleberry, the kooky kookaburra. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Thank you for all the name suggestions, if you gave them. Um, so going back. That's the end result, but going back a few steps, this is the starting point of the process. I had all these lovely ideas in my head of colors and whatnot, and so I got my color pencils out, and I was sketching, and I loved all the colors and everything that I had in my sketch. So that is my sketch, all right? I had fun, and I was really happy with it. And then I started painting. I got a blank canvas, and I started painting, and of course, pencils and paints, they do different things, don't they? So you don't quite get the same effects with paint as you do with pencils. Um, and I just couldn't get the bits, I couldn't get the wings right, I couldn't get the tail colours right, and I just wasn't happy with the background colour, was a bit too strong. So this is the first one I did, all right? So you might be thinking that looks pretty good. Actually, well... Was that the first one? Look, look, I've got three different canvases here. <laughs> Let me just show you. I'm going to show you the whole one of this because I'll show you the rest of that later. So this one on the left was actually the first one I did, this one here. And the, I just couldn't get the texture of the wings right. Um, and I did another one and I couldn't, the tail wasn't right and I'm not happy with the background color. The bird just sort of disappears a little bit into the background and I couldn't get the... I just wasn't getting the effect I wanted that I had on my pencil sketch um, for the wing. So I started to get a little bit deflated because um, it's like, but I love my sketch and I wanted this painting to look like the sketch and I just couldn't quite manage to get it to work. Um, so I started getting a bit down on myself and feeling a bit frustrated and I was like, ah. Oh, is this going to work? Am I going to be able to make this work? Maybe I should just try something else. Should I just give up on this one and pick another topic? Um, I still, I still, that whole, you know, imposter syndrome stuff, even though I've been painting all my life, still goes on in my head too. Um, but the problem with that, you know, when you get to the point where you're starting thinking, give up, give up, move it aside. The problem with that is that you miss out on what could be. All right, you get to a point, it's like climbing, it's like when you're climbing a mountain and you and you stop before you get to the end. It's like you miss out on what on getting to the end and seeing the view and all the stuff, and you're so close, you know, you could be just this far away. Um, and you miss out on all the joy and the accomplishment that you feel when you finish that painting just because you decided to give up because it wasn't working. All right. And and you know, when you push through that and get to that end result, it's so satisfying and you just feel that sense of confidence and a boost of your morale and you get a beautiful painting. Um, you know, you miss all of that if you give up. Um, and you might also end up with loads and loads of unfinished masterpieces. You know, all these paintings you've started are not finished because you it, you got to a point and you gave up on them, um, maybe. Um or maybe you've got uh, art materials that are just gathering dust because you've gotten to a point where you've tried things that hasn't quite worked out the way you wanted to. And so you've just packed them away or just left them sitting there and they're now gathering dust and you're not using them. Um, and you never get to experience that real joy and, and the confidence boost that you get from creating a beautiful painting and the joy of being creative and learning new things along the way, you know. Um, now, I know we can usually be our own worst critics, 
and it is totally easy to doubt ourselves. Um, I, I still do it, like I said, all the time. So there I was painting my kookaburra um, and things just were not turning out how I wanted them to. And I was thinking, I was I was on the verge of thinking, oh, I'm going to give up on this one. I have to just pick something else. Maybe I'll do a koala bear instead. <laughs> um, but then I reminded myself what I tell my students all the time. You know, um, what is it? Dr. Heal Thyself or something. Um, practice, practice, practice. Just try, keep trying and practice. Um, you know, if you don't get it how you want it first time, just practice till you do. Do it as often as you need because practice, practice makes perfect. And I reminded myself that it took Van Gogh 10 years to perfect his Starry Night painting. He always painted loads and loads of versions of each painting until he felt it was right. So if Van Gogh needs 10 years to paint one painting, <laughs> I can do it in a weekend, surely. Um, so I tried again and I did a few different things. Um, I literally, um, I literally tried, the, check this out. This is my six, this is like an extra unique species of kookaburra that has six wings. Look, <laughs> I just kept trying different patterns and different techniques and different brush strokes and different color combinations and how colors, seeing how colors mix together. So I just kept just doing new wings underneath. So this is my six winged, <laughs> highly, highly rare species of kookaburra. Um, but I just kept trying stuff. I just kept trying stuff. And every time I tried something else, I was like, oh, that color mixes a little differently with that color. Oh, if I do this brush stroke, I get a slightly different effect. Or, oh, if I do that, then that looks more like a feathery sort of texture. Um, so, you know, I just practiced lots. And then when I ran out of room on there, um, I always have a practice canvas. So I did, I did more. And I tried different colors and I was trying the tail as well. I couldn't quite get the tail colors right. So I just practiced lots of different things. And you can see that I made quite a bit of a mess on this canvas. Um, just trying stuff out, different color combinations. I was trying some curves instead of some dabs, different brushes, different layering paints. I was just trying stuff out and I actually got lost in it and ended up painting till like 10 o'clock at night, forgetting to even have dinner because I was so lost in it and having so much fun um, exploring all the different combinations. But my point is, I tried loads of different stuff and once I practiced the ones I liked a few times as well, I eventually figured it out. I figured how to get out, how to get the painting like I wanted it to, all right? And I'm so glad I did um, because, because now I have a background that I like and I have a beautiful kookaburra that I'm really, really happy with. And I'm so pleased I put the extra effort in um, because the other backgrounds I was trying, um, I don't think, did I even show you that one? So the backgrounds didn't work and then that one was too pale and... You know, you just got to keep going and keep trying stuff until you get it how you like it. So the secret to getting better at painting fast and getting your art to look how you imagined in your head or in your or in your sketchbook. See, that one looks a lot more like the one on my sketchbook. Um, is actually not a secret at all. <laughs> it's as simple as just practice, 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 and try things out. Try things out till you get it. And you will be so pleased you did because as you're trying things out and practicing different things, um, like I did, you know, with, with my practice canvas, every time I tried something different, I got a slightly different effect. Um, and, you know, you can, you can try different types of brushes, different types of brush strokes, um, different combinations of color, um, layering your paints differently. I tried some where I put some purple down first and then I dried the purple and put blue on top and I tried some with blue purple when it was still wet and I put blue on top while it was still wet and every different combination gives you a slightly different outcome. Um, and even there were some things that I did, I was like, oh, that doesn't work for this painting, but I'll remember that for another one, you know. So just even just letting your colors blend in different ways, there's just so many different things that you can try. You can see I've got several practice canvases where I just, I literally just fill a canvas um, with different things that I'm trying out. Um, and that's how I learn as well. 
So, you know, there's so many different things you can try. And the only way to learn is to experiment. Try it out and practice, practice, practice. And it's actually loads and loads of fun. Um, Brenda says, if I find if I'm tired and hungry, oh, my craft room isn't warm, then things turn out, turn to custard. <laughs> Maybe go get some custard, some hot custard. That'll warm you up, Brenda. Um, yeah, I, I definitely need to be in a good mood. I put, I usually put on some really good music, listen to music at the same time as well. I put my favorite music on. Uh, last weekend, it was some really hardcore dance music. So it was like I was nightclubbing while I was painting. Sometimes it's worship music. Sometimes it's uh, all sorts of stuff. Whatever makes you happy, do that while you paint. Uh, and it works. But the whole point is experimenting, practicing, and just having fun with it. And that is the fastest way to get better, or one of the fastest ways to get better at painting. Because each time you try something new, you learn something new. And all those new things add to your knowledge of painting. And you can take those all into your next painting. So the more you try, the more you learn, the better, more better you will get. All right. And all of that will equal you improving and getting better at art. So if you're feeling stuck or not getting the results you want, or there's things in your head and they look different when you get them on canvas, practice. And this works no matter what level you are at, okay? Whether, you know, practice, whether you're at a first time painting, whether you're just learning, whether you've been painting for years. And as you've seen, I've been painting for as long as I can hold a paintbrush and I'm <laughs> so that's quite a few decades and I still have to practice and try things out and learn things because every painting is different and you want to achieve something different so there's always more to learn and I love that about painting that even though you you, well, you can't know it all it's like finishing the internet you know you can't it's like you can't ever paint everything or know everything so and that's the joy of it there's always more fun to have and more to learn um now, I, like I said, I've got loads of practice canvases. Um, I, When I filled it up, that one's ready to just paint over with gesso or just white paint. And you can reuse it over and over and over and over again. They do get a little heavier the more coats of paint you get on them. Um, this, one, this one's probably been used, oh, I don't know, it's getting a bit heavy, five or ten times already. But you can see underneath, look, can you see the, the texture? Underneath, you can see there's a whole bunch of stuff. There's people practicing birds in the studio. They're upside down, but um, you get the point. Just sacrifice one canvas and call it a practice canvas when it's full. Paint over it and reuse it, and you will always have something to practice on so that you don't have to put it straight onto your um, canvas. I mean, I was feeling optimistic, which is why I went straight in and had a go, but then obviously that didn't work out. So I've now got three two two kookaburras and my final one but then i i'm doing this for you guys so i will paint over these and reuse those they will become practice canvases for in the studio so nothing ever gets wasted i don't like waste so they will they will definitely be reused um if you don't want to use canvases um canvas pads are awesome they're just they're like canvas they like canvas, um, but they're canvas pads. There's bigger ones. There's all sorts of different sizes and shapes. Um, I use these for practicing um, little things on as well, um, you know. And it's it's literally like canvas. It's just a sheet of canvas. The only difference is it's not on a frame. It's not on a frame. It's just in a pad instead. And they're um, they're ridiculously cheap. If you go to your your emporiums in your two dollar shops um you can often pick them up i think this one was only like seven or eight dollars and that one was like five dollars and there's heaps of sheets in them these you can still paint over and reuse these um just whatever works for you um so just make it pick something to practice on and have some practice um i mean do you think it was worth me practicing a few times a few things till i got this one what do you think do you think it was worth me having a go until I got this? Was it worth it, do you think? I quite like it. I think it was. I'm so happy with the result. Just because I stuck at it and I didn't give up. All right. Now, I am on a mission to make painting accessible to everyone. 
So for anyone who is learning to paint with me, the added bonus of me taking the time to practice different things, you know, I figure I, is, is that I figure it out first. So I can teach it straight to you guys, straight to my students and my paint clubbers. So you don't have to figure it all out. You don't have to spend a weekend um, painting. I don't know how many wings. Even this one has this, if you, if you, peeled the layers back there's about six wings there because I didn't like it I painted white over it painted another one didn't like it painted white over it did another one I think this is about the fifth or the sixth one I did um on the same canvas that's another thing you can do by the way is if you're in a painting and you've done a bit that you don't like dry it paint that bit white do it again it's like twinking it out it's awesome um, but yes, yeah, so I spend the time figuring it out so that my students don't have to, my paint clubbers don't have to. They get all the benefit of my years of experience and practice, um, you know, that I can put into my paintings. I teach to make it so much easier and quicker and they learn even faster still. Um, and when I teach, I always break everything down, easy, simple steps and explain exactly how I do everything and show them step by step so that it's much easier to learn and you don't have to spend hours painting six winged kookaburras like I did <laughs> um you know you can just have fun creating and painting and learn the new skills at the same time while I teach them to you um but even with someone showing you step by step um a painting practice is always still important um and like I said I've been painting all my life pretty much and I still need to practice and learn things because I've never painted a kookaburra wing before ever I've painted kingfisher and a kiwi and a tui and fantail and those are all available on demand if you'd like to paint those they're on my website if you'd like but I've never painted a kookaburra wing um, and birds are also beautifully different so I had to learn that too um, but yes however you're learning practice always practice and try things out learning anything new you just have to practice to get better it's like when you're driving a car right the first time you got in a car probably a few bunny hops and stalls and uh, those hill starts oh I don't know um, but you know with a little bit of practice and over time now you jump in the car and you don't even think about it because you've just practiced it so many times you're a natural um, and what I see with my students and my paint clubbers the ones who improve the fastest are the ones who practice more all right, and they're not afraid to try stuff out. Of course, lots of members join Paint Club just to enjoy a fun creative session each month, which is great because that's what creativity is about as well. Just the relaxation and doing something fun for yourself every month is awesome. So good for your well-being because art is good for you. Um, but those who want to get better and really improve, they're the ones that practice and they do get better. Um, so if you've ever tried anything creative and you've been disappointed with the results and wondered if you actually have what it takes, I say, yes, yes, you do. Everybody's got creativity inside them. You just need to need some help getting it out and you just need to practice more. OK, um, what's the saying? If at first you don't succeed, try and try again. Uh, so true. So true. Because I don't know, I must have painted 20 kookaburra wings before I finally got them right, <laughs> like how I wanted them. So practice, 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 knowing that when you practice, you will learn along the way and get better. It is inevitable. You cannot help but get better if you keep practicing and trying stuff. So I hope that's been helpful. Um, oh, thanks, Brenda. I do like the light background too. The, the darker one, the kookaburra, just sort of the light that disappeared into the background. Um, and in case you haven't noticed, um, if you've been watching, following me for a while, whenever I do um, talk about a painting, I always like to try and match my shirt to the painting. So this one, however, is quite different because I've had this shirt for quite a while and I've always loved all the colours in it. So this is the first time a shirt has actually inspired the painting. So before I started, I wanted the colours in the painting to match this shirt because I just love how the colours combine together. They're just so lovely, aren't they? So, yeah, normally it's the other way around. But this time the shirt uh, inspired the colour. That was an idea from my cousin Edana who once said to me, oh, that would make a really cool paint colour, paint palette. <laughs> it's like, done. <laughs> yeah. So... Um, like I said, I hope that's been helpful and encouraging and that you now have an understanding that um, 
you know, you do have it in you. You do have it in you to get better. Um, you just, with practice, with practice, you will get better. You will, will, will. It's not a matter of maybe. It's anything you do. The more you practice, the better you get. It's like Olympians. They don't start out being great. They have to practice and train and they get better every time they do. So it's the same with painting. So practice, practice, practice. Now I'm teaching this one to my paint clubbers later this month. Yay, I can't wait. Oh, Brenda Carlo is looking forward to it as well. So am I. Um, so if you want to learn how to paint, what did we call her? Matilda Cackleberry, <laughs> the kooky kookaburra. If you want to learn to paint her and paint her wings, uh, get yourself on the wait list to enroll in Paint Club and you'll get access to the full video tutorial when you join and the supply list and everything you need. There's a tracer as well. It's all easy to follow step by step online. Um, and like I said, full supply and color list. So head on over to my website, heartforart.co.nz, click, choose Paint Club from the menu and click the pink button that says, yes, I want first access. Pop your name in there, hit the submit button, and then you will be the first person to know. You will be the first to know when I am taking new enrollments into Paint Club. And it's likely to be soon. I'm in the planning stages of it being very, very soon. So if you want to paint that one and loads of other ones, get your name on the wait list. So heartforart.co.nz, paint club in the menu, click on the pink yes I want first access button and pop your name in there and hit the submit button and I'll let you know as soon as we're taking enrollments and you can come and paint kookaburras with us. Yay! Um, now if you want some help getting started painting and you don't have any art supplies yet um, and you're not sure what to get because wow there's a lot of different ones out there eh? Um, I've got an awesome free shopping list for you. It's a basic must-have art supplies. It includes um, all the stuff that I paint with as well, the paints and brushes, and tips on where to shop for best prices as well. Uh, it'll basically, I've designed it to help you avoid wasting money on the wrong art supplies because there are so many out there. And this list is going to make buying your art supplies and getting set up with the right supplies super quick and easy for you. You can grab that on my website as well. It's my free shopping art supplies shopping list. Um, so I specifically put it together for new artists. So just head over to my website and scroll down a little bit on the homepage and you'll see the free art supply list and shopping guide on that homepage there. Click that, pop your details on the form and you'll get it straight to your inbox. Hi Leah, good to see you here as well. Um, and if you already have your supplies, but maybe they've been gathering dust, you know, maybe at some point you've tried to paint and it hasn't turned out how you want it and you've just kind of pushed them to the side a little bit and they're gathering dust and you want to maybe have another go. I hope I've encouraged you to. Um, and you want me to show you step by step how to create a painting from start to finish. You know, if you want a little bit of guidance along the way, um, and if you want someone to show you step by step how to do that within a few hours, like a whole painting, and it only takes a few hours, um, then go and check out my on-demand painting tutorials on my website. On-demand in the menu of heartforart.co.nz. They're all super easy and a perfect way to get practice. Perfect way to get more practice. <coughs> and um, was it you, Brenda? No, it was Linda. It was Linda um requested I, I meant to do this a while ago but i've just added a new one island bay is now there on demand as well so you can paint this one beautiful island bay from wellington um might look difficult but it's not because i break it all down step by step so that one has just been added like yesterday or the day before even like just like fresh brand spanking new um so that is one of my most popular paintings and the very first one, in fact, that I created for Heart for Art. So it's a special one to me too. Um, and because it's just around the corner as an island bay, I love it too. So whatever you're painting, wherever you're painting, however you're painting, just remember it's all about having fun. It's not about it being frustrated or disappointment the point is to have fun and enjoy your creative time and if you don't get it how you want first time second time however many wings it takes <laughs> don't give up 
just keep trying, keep practicing, get a practice canvas, um, get a practice canvas, paint over it when it's full, awesome, and and keep trying, and you will get it. You will learn loads of fun stuff along the way, and you will get it. So just keep trying. Don't give up on yourself because it is in you. You can do it. I have faith in you. So thank you for watching. I hope that's been helpful. Um, don't forget to like, share, and follow, and subscribe. Um, I hope you'll come back and hear more tips and strategies on how to live your most creative life. And I hope to see you behind a paint club, uh, behind a paint, oh, in paint club, yes, but behind a paintbrush. I hope to see you behind a paintbrush soon. Have fun. Bye, everyone.